Good evening. I'm Brian Lowack, and I'd like to welcome you to the fourth and final Pinellas County Redistricting Board's community meetings. Uh, what I'm going to do now is play a recording of the presentation. In this, in this presentation, you will get an overview on how you can participate and provide your input uh, during tonight's meeting. It'll then go into an overview of the Pinellas County redistricting process, and then uh, provide an overview of the uh, currently uh, proposed district map alternatives. At that point in time, uh, Kurt Spitzer and I will jump back on and we will hear from you, uh, answer any questions that you have, and that'll be the time where you can provide public comment. So with that, uh, I will start this recording. Thank you. Kurt and I will answer question, as many questions related to the presentation as we can. Only relevant questions that are received through the Q&A feature will be answered. Following the Q&A, you will have three minutes each to provide feedback and comments related to the proposed alternative maps. This is the time to let your voice be heard. Comments will be communicated with the redistricting board for consideration as they continue their work to provide recommendations to the Board of County Commissioners. Before we start the meeting, I'd like to give you a quick overview of how you can participate using Zoom. If you're on a computer or phone using the Zoom app, move your mouse or tap the screen and you should see the menu below. The menu goes away when you're just watching. Click Q&A. A window will open where you can type in your question. Type your question and select send. You can mute, move the Q&A window by clicking and dragging it at the top. Questions will only be seen by the moderators. We will answer questions after the overview on proposed district map alternatives. If you called on a phone number to listen, press star nine to raise your hand. If you're on a computer or phone on the Zoom app, move your mouse to the button to the bottom of the screen and this menu will appear. Click raise hand. If your hand is already raised, it looks like this. Click again to lower your hand. When you are called on to speak, you should see a message like this appear. Click unmute to ask your question. If you dialed in, you may need to press star six to unmute. If you accidentally click the wrong thing, you should see a new unmute option appear at the bottom left of the Zoom screen. This only appears when the host has given you the ability to speak. And with that, I'd like to turn it over to KSA's Kurt Spitzer, who is the redistricting board's consultant, and he will begin today's presentation. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate the opportunity to be here today. We're going to uh, begin with a a PowerPoint presentation on the redistricting uh, process. And um, then we'll begin to look at a few of the maps that are currently under consideration uh, by the redistricting board. So let's uh, jump into it. <clears throat> redistricting is the process by which the legislative body of the jurisdiction uh, equalizes differences in population by making adjustments to the district boundaries. The legislative body could be the Florida legislature, uh, it could be a city commission or city council, a school board, or in this case, uh, the board of county commissioners. Uh, it's important to remember that redistricting does not equal, is not the same thing as reapportionment. Reapportionment is when uh, the seats in the U.S. Congress, the, the members of Congress, are reallocated uh, amongst the states after each decennial census. Uh, and some states may gain a seat, some states may lose a seat, but that's what reapportionment is. It is not the same as redistricting of the legislative body. Why do we do this? Well, there's a few different reasons. Um, it's uh, examination of the need to uh, redistrict is required by the Florida Constitution and the Florida statutes, chapter 124 of the Florida statutes. Uh, there is additional direction found in some county charters, Pinellas being one of them. Uh, and importantly, uh, redistricting is intended to further the principle of one person, uh, one vote. 
there are some general guidelines for the redistricting process. Uh, first, districts should be as nearly equal in population as is possible. And this is the dominant criterion in the redistricting process. Uh, and we'll talk about this in greater detail uh, shortly. There are other criteria. We uh, do not dilute minority voting strength. We follow census blocks, and there are reasons for doing this. We follow significant man-made or natural boundaries. Uh, districts need to be contiguous. They need to preserve other communities of interest. And there are a few special criteria in the Pinellas County Charter. It's impossible to develop a districting plan that meets all of the criteria at the maximum extent practicable. Uh, so individual criteria and individual guidelines are balanced in concert with each other, with population being the dominant criteria. So concerning population, uh, we find direction for county governments uh, in several places. One is the Florida Constitution, which directs the Board of County Commissioners to divide the county into districts of contiguous territory as nearly equal as in, as in population as is practicable. Uh, Florida statutes has a similar language, uh, nearly equal in population as is possible. Uh, changes to the district boundaries may only be made during odd numbered years. And in a similar fashion, the Pinellas Charter speaks to districts being contiguous and as nearly equal in population as is practicable. What does that mean? Uh, well, it's, it's impossible uh, to attain districts that are truly equal in population. So you try to minimize the deviation from the mean or ideal population size as much as possible. Generally speaking, uh, deviations that are 3% over or 3% under the average is good. It's important to remember that uh, population does not mean registered voters. Uh, population is the population of the county and the districts as determined by the Bureau of the Census. And in the event that there are two districts with population differences of more than 10 percentage points, uh, that's a problem and you need to address that. And as an example of that, in this example, we have the largest district being about five and a half percentage points over the average, and the smallest district being about seven and a half, 7.4 percent under the average. So that's a difference of over 12 percentage points, and that jurisdiction then needs to try to equalize those differences by making adjustments to district boundaries. Now, there are some reasons, perhaps, when you could ex exceed the 10%, the 10 point rule, and that is uh, to create a minority influence or majority district, or as an example, to underpopulate a high growth area of the county or city. Uh, Talking about uh, dilution of minority voting strength, a couple of examples of that, uh, things to avoid, packing or cracking. Packing is an attempt to locate most of the minority population into one district so as to dilute influence in other districts. And cracking is splitting the minority population into two or more districts so as to dilute influence in all districts. And here's an example of that. In this particular example, uh, we have five uh, districts uh, and two of which uh, are uh, minority majority or minority influence uh, districts. Under the packing example, uh, most of the minority population has been located into one uh, district. And under the cracking example, the minority population has been split amongst four districts. So these are things that uh, 
a city or county or school board should seek to avoid uh, doing in the redistricting process. We use census blocks. Uh, it's readily available. It's uh, presumed to be correct. Uh, information from the Bureau of the Census uh, comes down in uh, units that uh, may be shaped like a block, but may not be shaped like a block. That's just the nomenclature of this unit, uh, but it includes information on uh, population, uh, race, uh, voting age, ethnicity, uh, all the sort of information that uh, you would need in the redistricting uh, process. You can supplement this information with other sources of information, uh, but that you need to be have you need to be clear in your documentation uh, as to why you are doing this and how you are doing this. Uh, our experience has been that uh, in exercises that occur immediately after the conclusion of a decennial census, there really is no other need to supplement the census data with other sources of information. We try to follow significant boundaries, uh, and those could be uh, major roadways, uh, water bodies, uh, things like that. It's easier to understand for voters. It's less disruptive to voting precincts. Uh, significant boundaries are usually coterminous with census blocks, and so it makes sense uh, to do this. There are other criteria. Uh, districts must be contiguous to one another. Uh, you attempt to keep communities of interest together. In the case of the county, you would attempt to keep uh, cities and neighborhoods uh, from being split by district uh, boundaries. And you uh, try to avoid districts that have uh, bizarre shapes. And we've all heard the term gerrymandering. This is named after a governor of Massachusetts uh, many years ago who created a particular district. Uh, and, and someone commented that that looked like a salamander. And the other person said, no, that's a gerrymander. So that's where that term comes from. And you, you try to avoid these sorts of shapes. Uh, in more recent times, here's an example of a a gerrymandered district in North Carolina, uh, which I believe that followed uh, I-85, uh, and there was a case in front of the Supreme Court that ruled that particular shape uh, invalid. Now, there are special criteria uh, that are contained in the Pinellas County Charter. Um, most of these are uh, similar to criteria that one would use in any other redistricting process, but it is specifically uh, stated in the charter. Uh, no district shall be drawn with the intent to favor or disfavor a party or an incumbent. Uh, district shall not be drawn with the intent or the result of denying or abridging the equal opportunity of racial or language minorities. Districts need to be contiguous and as nearly equal in population as is possible. And where feasible, we utilize municipal boundaries and we try to keep together the unincorporated areas of the county. So again, these are the criteria that we are using in this uh, process. As I stated earlier, uh, it's impossible to attain all of these criteria uh, to the maximum extent possible. And so what we do is we uh, balance these criteria against each other uh, with population being the dominant criteria. Let's talk briefly about the 2020 uh, census. Uh, this uh, country has uh, con been conducting a census uh, for many, many years. Uh, the organizational tasks regarding the 2020 census actually began about a year and a half before census day which is april 1st and the census data is uh, presumed to be uh, correct 
And this was the original plan for the uh, census. It actually, counting began in uh, January of 2020. Uh, census day uh, is the day that we take a snapshot of America's households, that was April 1st. Uh, and then counts for reapportionment uh, for Congress uh, were to be given out by the end of 2020. And then the data for redistricting at the state and local level was to be delivered March 31st of this year. Here's what uh, actually happened uh, this past go round, uh, and, and largely due to the uh, COVID uh, outbreak, uh, things were delayed significantly. Uh, the census uh, suspended field operations, actually suspended them altogether for a couple of months. Uh, the reapportionment counts due at the end of last year uh, were not delivered until April of this year. And the redistricting data uh, due at the end of March of this year was not delivered until mid-August uh, of this year. And then a second uh, set of data, the same numbers, but in a more user-friendly uh, format, was delivered uh, towards the end of September. The Pinellas Charter uh, provides for a county districting board. This section was approved by the voters of Pinellas County uh, in 2016. There are 11 members appointed by the board of county commissioners. And the board is charged with uh, developing one or more proposals to redistrict the county commission. Uh, the county commission is not bound by these recommendations. These are uh, advisory in nature. Florida statutes uh, limits the, the authority to redistrict a county to the county legislative body, which is the board of county commissioners. Uh, nonetheless, uh, a charter may provide for an advisory board, and that is what uh, the voters of Pinellas County have approved. Moving forward, uh, this meeting, uh, there'll be a few other uh, community input meetings uh, where we're seeking uh, input from the public on the current redistricting uh, options being considered. There will be uh, meetings of the redistricting board later in October, also in November, and then one or more recommendations from the redistricting board will be delivered to the Board of County Commissioners for their initial consideration in November, and then final adoption will occur in early December of this year. Remember, we talked about criteria uh, earlier in this presentation. Um, in sort of an unusual uh, situation, <clears throat> the current boundaries of the districts for both the at-large districts and the single member districts are well within acceptable tolerances uh, in terms of population deviation from the mean or average. Um, for the at-large districts, the residence areas for, of the at-large districts, uh, they are the, the spread between the smallest and the largest is uh, less than uh, three percentage points. And for the single member districts, the spread between the smallest and the largest uh, district is a little bit larger, uh, but not not much. And so it's well within the 10 percentage point uh, threshold that is commonly followed. So although the existing districts are uh, within acceptable tolerances, uh, there are uh, a few different alternatives that the redistricting board has uh, developed for uh, consideration. It doesn't mean that the redistricting board will approve uh, any of these. Um, but they are being considered at the uh, present time. And we can talk about those uh, shortly. Uh, but if you would like more information on the process, you can go to this uh, website 
on the Pinellas County uh, website. What I'd like to do is jump over to some uh, uh, maps and so let me go to some data first. Uh, for the at-large districts um, that we've just looked at the current data and we found that it was uh, very acceptable in terms of deviations. There are two alternatives being considered for the at-large uh, residence areas and both of those are also well within acceptable tolerances in terms of deviations from the average district size. For single member districts, there are currently uh, three alternatives being considered. And all of these uh, three are also uh, well within acceptable tolerances in terms of uh, variations, deviations from the average district size. So what I would like to do uh, finally is to uh, show uh, some of the maps that are currently being uh, considered and show you how some of the differences are from uh, plan to plan. This is a map <clears throat> of the current at-large residence uh, areas for the at-large districts. Remember that Pinellas County is one of uh, two uh, counties that has seven uh, members of the Board of County Commissioners, four are elected from single member districts where only the voters of the district have the opportunity to vote uh, for a candidate for the Board of County Commissioners. There's also three at-large districts. Um, each uh, candidate for an at-large seat must reside in a particular residence district, but all of the voters uh, in, in Pinellas County have the opportunity to vote for uh, candidates for the at-large seats. And so each elector in Pinellas uh, has the opportunity to vote for four out of, five, out of seven uh, county commissioners. So these are the residence areas, and you'll notice that they, they run in a, more or less in a north-south uh, pattern. Uh, one alternative that is being considered by the uh, redistricting board is to change that to an east-west pattern. So there would re be resulting a, a north county residence area, a south county residence area, and then a mid county residence areas, resident area for uh, persons uh, seeking to serve on the board of county uh, commissioners. Very different from the uh, current uh, plan, which remains uh, shaded in the blue, red, and yellow uh, shading. One alternative that uh, has been considered by the uh, redistricting board is sort of a compromise in between the east-west pattern of the first alternative and the existing north-south pattern, and that is to have the districts uh, go more in a more of a diagonal uh, shape, uh, where it's more uh, an, a north-south or uh, southwest northeast pattern between the uh, three residence areas for persons seeking to serve on the board of county commissioners so those are the two alternatives for the at-large seats that are currently being uh, considered there are three alternatives for the single member districts these are the current uh, districts for the single member districts uh, within Pinellas uh, County government, they more or less uh, have a, an east-west uh, pattern uh, here. The first alternative moves Clearwater Beach, which is actually part of the city of Clearwater, from District 4 
into District 5. When you add that population of Clearwater Beach, which I recall it being 4,000 or 4,500 people into this district, you would need to shed some population from this district into District 4. And the way that is done is to uh, remove this upper part of District 5, which is, the, is in the countryside area, and move that from District 5 into District 4. The second alternative for single member districts is similar to the first, but, but has another twist to it. It begins by moving Clearwater Beach into District 5, but then to continue this line and to make this boundary line a more horizontal, um, it, this district, we take this uh, part of District 4 and move it into District 5. So we've had Clearwater Beach and this area here going into District 5. And to offset that population change, uh, a greater area of this part of District 5 is moved into District 4. And this road here, I believe, is Sunset uh, Point. This bath, yes, Sunset Point Road this boundary line here. So it, uh, it, it's an attempt to keep these more of a community of interest together and to, to ha have a boundary line that is more easily uh, understood and more logical here. Both plans uh, at the present time make no other changes to uh, District 6, 7, or any other changes to Districts uh, 4 or uh, 5. So the third alternative uh, currently being considered is to uh, change the east-west pattern for most of the districts in Pinellas County, or I should say for two of the districts, to a north-south pattern. And so instead of running this boundary line here between districts four and five, the boundary line would go north south and this uh, then would split most of the unincorporated area in north county into two of the county commission uh, districts and so that's the effect of this particular plan again as with the other two alternatives there have been uh, no changes made at least at the present time, to districts uh, six or district seven. And so, uh, Brian, that concludes the presentation on the alternatives being considered uh, at the present time by the redistricting board. Well, now's, now's the time to hear from you. Hopefully you found that presentation informative. And if you have any questions uh, related to the presentation or the maps, uh, now's the time to type those into the Q&A feature in Zoom. If you have any comments, would like to provide any uh, additional input uh, on these maps, um, you can do so by raising your hand in the Zoom app or pressing star nine on your mobile device. And as I wait to see if there are any comments or questions, um, I'll just remind you that uh, all of the material that you have seen in this presentation, including the maps, can be found on the redistricting board's webpage that's located on PinellasCounty.org. Uh, the redistricting board has two more committee meetings. And in November, uh, the recommendations of the board will be presented to the county commission and the county commission will take uh, action to adopt final maps at, in December. So at this time, I'm not seeing any questions or any hands raised. So again, questions can be typed into the Q&A feature. And if you've got any general comments, please raise your hand in the Zoom app or press star nine.
Well, having uh, not seeing any questions or hands raised, um, I'll bring this in for a landing. This will conclude this evening's presentation. Uh, again, we really thank you uh, for joining us this evening and appreciate your willingness uh, to be engaged in the process. So with that, have a great evening. Thank you.